And here are two tickets for the last movie I saw at my favorite movie theater, the Austin Town Regal Cinema, um, uh, less than a week before it shut down. And here's the movie ticket for the last uh, movie I saw at the theater. Um, before it closed down, it was Lee Winnell's Invisible Man, which came out on February 27th, and it says it was March 5th, so I saw it within the end of the first week it first came out. The closure of the movie theaters due to the COVID-19 pandemic in early March. As a movie lover, the subject matter was staring me right in the face, and I just didn't get it. Um, with the last audio, I was trying to turn this into a found footage. Um, again, I'm also trying to show the creative process here, but this time I think I have the idea. I think I still want to stick to audio because that doesn't take up as much storage space as a video. We could do an audio movie, see how long that takes, um, but I think I'm going to focus on memories of the movie theater and how this has affected me. Right now it is June 6th of 2020, so that means the movie theaters have been shut down for three months or more. And within the last month, I've, I'll be honest, I've found myself having much less of an interest in movies than I used to have. I've always had a voracious appetite uh, for film, um, especially since I saw my all-time favorite movie, Jurassic Park, at the drive-in for the first time um, when it came out in 1993, um, June of 93, so I was just under 10 years old. Let's not do that math. <laughs> Um, but it's always been my favorite film, um, and I always carry that wonderful memory of seeing it at the drive-in, um, with my family. And just being wowed by it all, and I've always said that that has been what has pushed my love of movies. Just having my jaw on the floor for the entire 126 runtime of the movie as a young kid, um, always loving dinosaurs, even before that. Um, I'd read Michael Crichton's novel before that. Um, but as I said, it was such a great experience, such an incredible movie, um, such a roller coaster ride that I've been searching for that cinematic high since then. I had always liked movies beforehand, but that was the one that sold me. Uh, like I said, going after that rush. I would remember watching um, movies with my grandparents growing up, uh, old black and white, like Hitchcock movies on uh, AMC. That also helped propel my love of cinema at a very young age. And then when I became older, um, going to the movies like right after work as a reward for working, especially if I came in on my day off or something, uh, that was incredible. You know, no matter how bad the day was, knowing that there was a movie I could go to right when work's over. Um, that helped me get through the day and, you know, sitting down in the, the seat uh, I always took either the second or the third aisle right in the middle and with my big tub of popcorn and my big drink and, you know, sometimes gummies and just stuff in my face, you know, and just enjoying usually a good uh, horror movie, you know, uh, to help me relax, as we all like <laughs> at the end of a long day. And just thinking, this is it. Uh, that really helped propel my love of movies even further. You know, it was a comforting hand. It was a relaxation factor in an uncertain world. I'm sure that's how many people feel with their hobbies or things that they love or both. And movies just happen to be one of mine. 
it was getting involved in the stories, getting in someone else's shoes, uh, some other characters, uh, just forgetting the world around you, or even the fact that it reflected the world around you it was very cathartic. Movies I saw as a good friend that can uh, you can always rely to be there uh, in an uncertain world. And the theater was like uh, going to visit their house, you know, it was always open whenever you wanted. Uh, like I said, no matter how rough a day you had. And that was a wonderful thing. Um, maybe that's why when the theater shut down several months ago, uh, like I said, I went through the last month or so. I felt like I was losing my interest in movies. I mean, I'd try some. They weren't really doing it for me. Um, maybe a big part of that was the theatrical experience. That that comfort was gone. I'm not sure. And while we're on the subject of the comfort of horror films, uh, and family and the feeling of connection you get going to the movie theater. I think I miss the little traditions. Um, I got to get with my family, particularly my uh, sister. We would see a lot of the Paranormal Activity and Saw sequels. I believe it was from Paranormal Activity and Saw 4 on. Um, and they'd have them every year coming out around Halloween. And uh, we'd go see them. You know, it was a nice Halloween tradition. Good family bonding time. We always enjoyed ourselves. Um, <clears throat> good memories. And while we're talking about this, I would like to uh, also state the way that audiences interacted with uh, movies, uh, particularly like when me and my sister went to see Paranormal Activity 3. It was the night it was coming out, a uh, midnight showing. Um, it was a completely packed theater and everybody was yelling at the screen and trying to talk over it. Uh, <laughs> the talking over part was a little annoying, I'll admit, but the part where they interact with the screen and, you know, stereotypically say stuff like, you know, watch out or, you know, try to predict what's gonna happen. That was a lot of fun. Um, I remember seeing the Friday the 13th remake with my wife when we were dating. Uh, again, another midnight showing when it first came out. Um, <laughs> me being the huge horror fanatic that I am, and I have to get my fix as soon as possible. Um, and every time, you know, somebody would get killed by Jason, they'd all cheer. You know, that was a lot of fun. Uh, where else would something like that <laughs> happen? Or... Yeah. <laughs> in our civilization where something like that, if you did that outside, it would probably be looked down upon, you know? It was a little more acceptable in this form, I think. Kind of goes into the idea that horror is kind of our modern gladiator sports, uh, where we could cheer that on and, and get that out of our systems. But anyways, I digress. And continuing the topic of going to see the movies with your family, I remember seeing um, Ghostbusters 2 when I was five, not quite six, because uh, it came out in July of 89, I believe. So I was just a couple months shy of being six uh, with my dad. Another great memory I can remember as vividly as if it just happened yesterday. Uh, and Ghostbusters has always been one of my favorite series. Um, again, is the family connection, uh, the connection to your memory and having time with your family, part of it, uh, probably, probably why that's one of my favorite series to date. And another reason why I miss theater so much right now, um, or missing out on that connection. I also remember going to see the Nightmare on Elm Street remake um, at midnight on the night it came out, the premiere with um, my sister again and um, my wife and I remember um, my sister came and visited us about eight o'clock at night uh, I remember we ordered Chinese food <laughs> um, and I remember us just uh, conversing and trying to stay awake just to get to the theater before the movie started I mean I wasn't the biggest fan of that remake but I still uh, vividly remember that 
And I remember going to see Skyfall, the James Bond movie, which started at 12.07, you know, a uh, little wink wink to the him being 007. And there was like half hour of previews there, and the movie itself was just about uh, two and a half hours, so it was well past three in the morning. Uh, and I went by myself and driving home, and <laughs> um, it was an excellent movie, but that's another part of going to the midnight movies as fun as it is the the staying awake part you know but uh still really enjoyable one of a kind of, uh, reason why the theater is a one of a kind experience and i wouldn't trade that for anything and continuing with the idea of the relationship between family and the movie theater experience as i got older i took my children to the movie theater and we all enjoyed it because it was on Fridays, which was usually my only day off. And we would go to the first showing, so it was usually just us there. You know, whichever uh, family-friendly movie was just coming out that day. Uh, we all enjoyed seeing it before pretty much everybody else. It was usually one of the live-action Disney movies or a uh, cartoon of some similar sort. Um, and they talk about that all the time. Um, my kids have said that they miss the movie theater because of experiences like that. Um, and they can't wait till that gets going again. And uh, speaking of the live action Disney, I remember recently seeing um, with my kids and my mom um, at the drive in the Aladdin live action movie remake at the same place where all those years ago I saw the original Jurassic Park. So in a lot of ways, there's the family experience connection, and it's a lot like a time machine um, that just brings joy and memories from the past to now. It shows that family's timeless, and movies are timeless, and they create timeless experiences. I could go on with so many more movies I've had in the theater, which would fill up an entire feature, uh, but for now, let's just go with this overview because it certainly brings home the idea of as I said the timelessness of the relationship between family and audience and uh, the theatrical experience edit as I was going through my audio I realized I believe I said Ghostbusters 2 came out in July of 89 it came out in June of 89 and Invisible Man came out on February 28th, I believe I said the 27th. I was going off the head, the top of my head, so apologies for that. 